It is 6.06 on meeting of the select board to order. I have a business meeting minutes of May 14th and May 20th. I have one comment about the minutes we've been given, both the header and the first paragraph say April 9th, about May 14th. That was my comment. <laughs> well, this is an April 9th meeting. It could, it could I could have printed out the wrong ones, guys. Or I could no, have put the no. wrong date. So no, sorry. I, think, I think it's just the wrong. It could be a wrong, wrong date. Well, the first paragraph oh, is yeah. April 9th, too. Yeah, it could be the wrong date. I'll go out the first item. Oh, but the first no, item is like, yeah, yeah. Sorry, guys. I, I, I right, think, this, yeah. And this is the, uh, yeah, it's just short kind of the wrong end of departmental yeah. transfers. Whoops. <laughs> yep. <I know. laughs> so, so, other than changing those, those two today. things, any comments aside from that? No, what's the right motion to approve? Um, both, both sets of minutes. Did that be approved? Both sets of minutes with the uh, one in two places. In two places. I would second any other comments. All in favor? Aye. 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 Done. Payroll warrants, any comments? None. None. Uh, uh, all right, and then we want to move the personnel committee report up ahead and get the representatives here. Um, move that ahead of the weapons and sounds of the lights on the clock. Okay. Okay. Um, so, personnel policies. Trisha, or Julius, who is in the committee tomorrow. Um, well, let's just go around the table. Um, uh, as you know, this um, uh, personnel policy we decided last year, we really needed to review them. We got a grant that helped us, that had consulted the office with the initial updating and looking at things that, <laughs> that we were missing. And um, uh, I think they did an, an okay job of making us aware of things that ought to be there that were um, where they, I think they did not do such an okay job was taking the policies that they inserted and making them consistent with the policy we already had. Um, so there were places where they insert a similar policy, but didn't really match what our practice and policy had been. So um, the personnel committee, uh, with a lot of uh, input from Brian, from Lynn, from uh, Trisha there, and at the, the end here, and uh, department heads uh, did a lot of work on making that policy consistent with what are like for for example benefits. They just check the mention benefits and it's like, well, okay, this is how we do. It. So, um, they we we had to work on the details. So it seems like it's taken a long time, but it was really needed. It's an eighty-four page document. I've never finished it in one reading. And every time I pick it up, I see something that's like, oh, crap. So, if there's a double word or something like that. But it's been gone over by many, many people. So I think the content is actually good. There may be a, a typo in there. I found one and sent it in this, this afternoon. <laughs> um, but, but that's kind of um, how we got to the point of having a new personnel policy um, that's really just updated. And what would you or one of the, can anyone who was sitting there say what are the major changes significant? I know I know there's a lot of wording changes and things around the edges, but are there any significant major policies recommended or change that people can tell? I think it's more including things that we really needed to add to a policy than necessarily making specific changes. It was more um, clarity in some of the areas. Uh, For example, we didn't give everybody an extra week of vacation. No, there's none of that. Why not? Right. Um, that, that, that's, um, so we didn't want to make those kinds of changes. We just wanted to make it. Um, Are there any specific areas that got included that had not, no. that should have been included before? <laughs> I think there. that's probably the biggest change is, uh, like Lynn alluded to, it was what wasn't in it that... Can you give any specific yeah. examples of what... Oh, like, it's, 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 it's,
if you go to the end where all the appendices okay. are, it's those uh, agreements. Okay, that, it's, just, it's just, you know, yeah. looking through it, there's nothing that compares it to what was there. Oh, well, yeah. I know what was there before was a mess. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, some things like um, different policies, harassment policies, or whatever have changed okay. to, yeah. I would say the biggest change slash addition that we made was in the area of IT policies. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Excuse me. Can you identify yourself? <laughs> right. Susan, I remember a person who um, that the IT policies were in some ways not clear, some didn't cover some areas, outdated, and to me, that was the biggest area in the trust. Okay. Yeah, I just want to, for yeah. our purposes and the yeah. time to know what it is we're changing. Yeah. And it's another thing that also got clarified, and maybe this isn't a big thing, but there's, I they refer to things where an employee will get training on X, Y, or Z. And it's like clear who that training comes from. And does that come from the, um, the person who has uh, payroll and accounting does that come from the town administrator? Is that so? Some of those things were clarified, and sometimes like, the town will do this, and it's like it's really the town, and it's really the town administrator, it's really the board of select, uh, or something you know, things like that. I think were are some things that might have been kind of a little unclear. Um, that kind what of, you do when you have a vacancy, how do you recruit, where do you advertise, you know. What to okay. do, what yeah. someone's hired, what forms do they need to fill out? Just all in one place. And now it's, it's the bulk of the work has been done. If there are things that come up that require tweaking, we can do it on yeah. yeah. section by section basis rather than looking at the whole thing, which the personnel go. The committee did a great job of doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, well. and, and like uh, Tricia said, it's putting everything in one place because we had lots of separate little policies that were created over time but never really added to the because we knew that that needed to be updated in its entirety. So we'd have a uh, the accrual of vacation time rather than issuing vacation time in, on July 1st. That was a separate policy, but it never really got inserted into the old policy. So it's things like that, just to put it all in one place, yeah, make it clearer. Things get codified and yeah. the yeah. employee has an issue. Yeah. So we can go to yeah. the record and right. say, yeah. here's the way we do it. Right now, somebody has a problem, we're pulling this one, this one, this one, this one, this one <laughs> and giving them all these bits and pieces of the, what should be all personnel files. Yeah. Do we do that? Comments, questions? No. Anybody? Don't have anything to add. And I will make a motion to approve the submission from the personnel committee of the different personnel policies. Second. Discussion. Vote all in favor. Aye. 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 Thank you. For the personnel committee again. Shared it wasn't able to be here. Okay. Next, we have the report on electric vehicles from Weston and Samson. Uh, I see. If you identify yourself, we'll sign to see the other. Dave Pomerantz, who is Rivermore Energy. Okay. Uh, Sylvia, so if you can sort of jump in and give a brief overview. Sure. Um, can you hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Hi. Um, so, yes, we have. Um, uh, John put a lot from Rivermore Energy, and we have uh, Rebecca and Sam um, on on Zoom as well from um, Weston and Sampson. I'm not sure if, if uh, Dave is there in person with you, I think. Um, yeah. Yes. Or, yep. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so uh, these folks have been working um, on the town's behalf um, over the past, uh, gosh, I guess it's uh, year or so, um, and they conducted an assessment of our fleet of vehicles, our existing fleet, um, and our infrastructure. And uh, they finalized a report and submitted it um, to the town, um, and that has been distributed. And um, so they're going to present 
um, some of their, their findings and recommendations to us tonight. Um, and it will help us uh, as we consider our strategy for transitioning some of our vehicles um, to hybrid and electric options and um, uh, thinking about um, what that would mean for um, EV uh, infrastructure in town. Um, so thank you all for being here tonight. It'll be very helpful for um, you to give us an overview of your findings so that um, residents can um, uh, hear more about this and, um, and we can consider your recommendations. Yeah, great. Thanks, Sylvie. Um, if you could all hear me, I'm going to share my screen. Um, although I think the host disabled it. Um, is there any way to allow me to share my screen? Thank you. I just happen to be the local guy on the team. I live in Oh, okay. <laughs> I decided to come down to see you. I always forget. I didn't look in that. If you wouldn't mind um, moving up a little closer, it'll be so much easier to hear you. Sure. We're going to get the chair. Just pull the chair up. Uh, maybe just over to the table. There's something there. Yes. All right. Yeah, we're using table space. You should be all set now to share your screen. I need you, co -host. Yes, great. Are you all able to? So uh, there we go. Okay. Yes, now yes. All able to see that. Okay, great. Um. Well, I think we already went through your introduction, so I'll just skip down to the agenda. Um, and I'm Rebecca Mauser Hoy. I'm with Weston and Samson, and the. We're here, we wanted to discuss the EV fleet assessment that we conducted under uh, a meta grant, which is a municipal energy technical assistance grant. Um, and we wanted to go through our findings from that report and then kind of talk and have a discussion if there's any questions uh, looking forward for the next steps for the town. So <clears throat> the goal of the assessment was to look at kind of two sides. So we looked at the vehicles, and we looked at the infrastructure, so where we can put uh, charging stations within the town of Whateley. So we really wanted to evaluate a couple of vehicles within the fleet um, for uh, replacement for EV or hybrid electric. And we wanted to look at a couple of select locations that were provided by the town as kind of priority locations um, and see what the possibilities, if they're good candidates for um, charging st station infrastructure. So we first looked at the existing fleet evaluation and we looked at select vehicles. Um, so we only looked at six vehicles within the police, the fire department and the highway department. Um, after looking at all these uh, existing vehicle types, <clears throat> we did identify that all were possible for replacement with either hy hybrid electric um, or electric. And I will note in the report, we looked at non-plug-in hybrid electric, um, there also is a plug-in hybrid electric option as well. Um, so we used the Department of Energy's Alternative Fuels Data Center database, which provided electric and hybrid electric vehicle replacement options for the six vehicles. So these options that we found for each of these six vehicles are included in the report as an appendix. Um, there's a table as Appendix A that lists out all the different options for the town that they could choose to replace these vehicles. We also looked at the Department of Energy's uh, vehicle cost calculator for the replacement um, and the outputs of the, those cost breakdowns are provided in Appendix B of the report. I'm not gonna go through that all in detail um, for this um, presentation, but if anyone needs uh, a copy of that, I believe Sylvie and the town have that. Um, and from looking at if we replace these six vehicles for the town with either electric or hybrid electric, it does reduce the town's greenhouse gas emissions from either 3,000 to the 12,000 pounds of CO2 annually, um, depending on which, which option you pick. Can I ask a quick question here? Yep. Um, the numbers in this chart on miles per gallon and so on, those are just like averages for a Ford Explorer or for, or are they specific to these exact vehicles or are they just cars? They're on? average. Yeah, they were just be what's average um, for the, the Ford Explorer, not specific for the ex existing vehicles. So the, so these are not numbers for existing vehicles. And also in here, when they figured out greenhouse gas, you don't know how many miles we drive on these each year. Um, what are you using for number of miles? 
when they when you figure out how much the greenhouse gas emission savings. I believe we had estimated um, miles per gallons based on you know a standard police vehicle. No. I can go back and look at the um, at that. I'm not sure if we use the exact uh, mileage from your your vehicles, um, but I can get back to you and let you know what those numbers are if they're based okay. on the actual mileage or if it's more of a average of what a police or fire would use. Right, because it, it's, that's really, really important, actually, because um, in, in terms of figuring out like what we could be saving here, it does depend a lot on how much the vehicle gets used. And that's, um, yeah. that's what I, want, I wanted to be really clear about. These numbers are all estimates based on like, and what towns maybe in general do and not specific to how many miles our cars are driven or trucks or what the miles per gallon are actually on our uh, trucks, right? Yeah, and it could be Miss Bogan, like Sylvie said, we've been working on this for a while. So I believe we did have uh, data from the town, um, but I will confirm that because, yes, that does make a difference, whether it's, you know, a large city or a smaller town like Waitley, for sure. Thanks. But I do believe we do have um, some information on that from the town. Um, and the, the miles per gallon is from fueleconomy.com. So that's kind of a standard. So the miles per gallon was a standard um, miles per gallon for those that class of vehicle or that Ford Explorer. Um, so the miles per gallon wouldn't be specific for the vehicle, but the, the miles driven would have been. Right. But it didn't get miles driven. It gave pounds of CO2 that you would save um, or that you would be generating. And that you would need to know the miles to get. Yes. It doesn't, yep. It's just as transparent how the calculation was made. Yes. I, I feel yep. like it's not the right information so that I couldn't follow the dots and understand that where that number came from. Of course, we'll, we'll confirm that. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Um, so we wanted to kind of talk briefly. We know that um, money is is always an important thing for for smaller towns. Um, so looking at vehicle grants and incentives um, within Massachusetts, um, there's the Massachusetts Electric Vehicle Incentive Program or Mass EVIP. They do have a fleet incentive uh, that helps eligible public entities acquire EVs for their fleet. So there are grants out there. These are kind of the values you can get up to per vehicle from Mass EVIP um, based on what you decide to, to pick. Um, there are you know purchasing options versus lease options with all, which also might help um, the cost because we understand that some of these vehicles might be an electric might be a little bit more than a you know internal combustion engine. So there are grants and incentives out there for that. Um, the more EV uh, rebate incentive, this while this grant wouldn't necessarily help uh, the, the municipal fleet, um, this grant is more for residents, businesses, or nonprofit organizations. Um, it might help you know get the word out there to any residents if if they want to help kind of reduce the town's greenhouse gas uh, reduction goals. So we wanted to include that in here as well. <clears throat> um, so the second half of the evaluation was looking at charging station uh, evaluation. So currently in the market, there are three options for charging stations. There's level one, two, and three. Um, there's differences beside, between these options um, depending on cost, speed of the charge, the size of the units. Um, typically, the level one is going to be your smaller kind of home um, charging station, wall-mounted one. This takes a lot longer, you know, eight to 20 hours to charge. Your level two is kind of what's typically out there uh, in the market. These are the medium-sized ones. These are 48 hours, to four to eight hours to charge. And then you have your level three, um, which are the fast chargers. These can take anywhere from, you know, 20, 30 minutes to one to three hours to, to charge. So these are um, really quick. And we are finding that a lot of uh, the level three is a little bit more expensive of a unit, but they do actually have the highest incentives right now. So we are finding as we're kind of doing the cost estimates for these that sometimes the level three is more cost effective for municipalities, um, depending on how many they're putting in. So it's kind of a, a balancing act um, with what you're getting versus the incentives. So for, this, for the town, we looked at six different locations. We looked at the town offices, the Harlehe Park, 
my <laughs> apologies if I pronounce that wrong, um, the Dickinson Memorial Library, the Town Hall, and the Police Department and the Highway Department. Um, so we looked at all these uh, lots that are in town. Uh, David was actually on site kind of looking at the existing infrastructure, the space available, uh, where it's located, public access. And, um, you know, all of these sites are feasible for locations. Obviously, uh, farther review would be recommended. You want to look at um, the location and the proximity of the utility infrastructure, the hosting capacity, how much uh, capacity is in with in the electrical infrastructure with the utilities. Um, look at ADA compliance, especially if you're getting EV EVIP grants, uh, you need to add ADA compliance um, components to it. Um, you know, space, if there's, you don't wanna take up uh, the whole parking lot for electric vehicle charging station um, when you need uh, other parking for other residents. Um, also space for the in inverters, uh, these take up quite a large portion too. <clears throat> Um, and so this is just a very high level cost overview for the six locations. Um, you know, we'd be recommending anywhere from um, four to eight ports, depending um, for this column, depending on where it's located. Um, it's about ten to forty thousand dollars per port. So like it, like I mentioned earlier, you know, we understand that cost is very important and and these do add up depending on how many you put in. So there are a lot of grants and incentives. Um, for these, especially in Massachusetts right now. So um, I'll go back and, and start the, the federal grants. Um, there's a US DOT charging and fueling infrastructure grant um, that was posted, the last round was posted um, in March and the funding was about $700 million for this grant. Um, there's quite a bit of money in this grant. It's also very competitive because it is federal. Um, but they do expect to repost this in 2024. So this is always an option um, for municipalities to look at if it's an option for them. Um, as far as Massachusetts, uh, Mass EVIP, just like they have the fleet incentive uh, program, they also have charging station um, incentives as well. Um, and these are for more of the hardware costs and the, the actual charging stations. Eversource has a make ready program and this is looking at more of the utility infrastructure. So trenching, transformer, the meter, the conduit, anything up to the pole, um, and they have a grant for that. So there's kind of two buckets within Massachusetts that you'd be looking at uh, for the charging station uh, incentives. Um, as I mentioned earlier, this uh, report was done under the Meta Grant Program. There's also tax credits that you can look at um, for these, which are fairly high right now at 30%. Um, and one of the latest ones is the Mass Nevi Program. Um, and this is the National Electric Vehicle Infrastructure Program. So they provide funding for sites within one mile of select highway corridors. Um, and Route 91 is one of those highway corridors. So this would be an option for, for Waitley to look at as well. So kind of looking forward and I'll, I'll keep going with that NEVI uh, locations. Um, you have two, two exit and on ramps within uh, Waitley that would be candidates for this along 91. So kind of thinking about potential locations along this corridor, um, we know that the town is thinking of uh, moving the new highway building. So, you know, potentially this could be sited within a mile of one of these on-ramps um, and be a good po uh, location to host the NEVI program. Um, and just looking at grants and incentives and, you know, we understand that the town might not be ready to go fully electric. Um, so just thinking of options for leasing or, you know, maybe looking at hybrid electric options as well. So um, that's what I have for, for the presentation, kind of a brief overview of everything. So we kind of wanted to open it up. If there's any um, questions and discussions, you know, obviously this is a very high level preliminary select, you know, a couple of vehicles, a couple locations. So there would be definitely further analysis um, if any location wanted to move forward or, um, also with any vehicles moving forward as well. So we're open to questions and discussion and thank you. Uh, well, the first question I have regards the disparity of 10 to 40,000 per port. What, what's the variable in there for the, uh, the amount of the, the cost on the charging station? I'm gonna pass that over to John. Yeah. Yeah, thank you for the question. The primary 
differences whether the, it's a level two station or a level three fast charging station. The level three fast charging stations are multiple of the cost of the level twos. So that's that's probably the biggest variable in the answer to your question financially. As Rebecca said, however, in in um in the presentation, and it's also in the report, the level three stations are more heavily incentivized currently by the utilities. So it does offset some of the capital costs. But the primary factor would be if it's a basic level two station, which are very useful. They're great for overnight charging. They're great for daytime charging. If people are going to be at a location for a longer period of time, um, that that's the primary factor. They're a lot less, a lot less expensive. And I can I can give you an example if you'd like of um of a project. We're we're currently managing the town of Deerfield's a public parking lot in uh, South Deerfield uh, on the intersection of Elm Street and North Main Street, where Berkshire Brewing Company and um, Hampshire Lumber are located. That project will have two level two stations and two ultra fast level three stations. And the level two stations were much less expensive. We we are seeing a lot of scenarios where you where um, our customers are combining level two and level three. But I think it just to get, you know, this these are some of the things that we do do for our clients. We help them with the financial model to another level of detail to say, if you're interested in a specific location, we would do a detailed financial plan for, for that location, taking into consideration the appropriate appropriate charging stations for location. And last point is, as Rebecca mentioned in her presentation, if it, if the location is within a mile of the highway and it's going to be a it's public access charging both for members of the community and the surrounding towns, as well as for people on the you know kind of going north and south on Interstate 91, then um, you know your that project is most likely going to be more level three oriented. Whereas if you're doing overnight charging to support um, you know fleet vehicles at the I know that the town is going to be looking at a new uh, DPW facility, but at the highway department slash police department, if you're looking at overnight charging there, then it could make a lot of sense to do level two, um, which is less expensive. It sounds like a, you have to say a combination of some level two, some level three is might, might be what's called for. The, the highway department garage isn't going to exist for quite a few years yet. So while while it's in the planning stage, we're probably at least five years down the road for that and possibly more. There's no. a fellow in Northampton who is working on a couple of level three charging stations combined with like a pizza shop and a coffee shop. And that makes me start to think about the exit 35 study that we're doing. Yeah, that was gonna be one of my questions leading in the same direction. Yeah. The um charging stations in South Airfield make perfect sense for coming off the highway because while you're charging you can go get something and you get something you need. But none of the locations that we have here are really suitable for a person coming off the highway to sit around for two or three hours or even for 30 minutes, honestly, to charge up a fast charger. I think all the locations seem to be more municipally oriented. Well, yeah. The exit 35 committee was talking about yeah. oh. doing stuff at that, in that area that we would need. Before we talk about, say, building restaurants or right. that, having a food cup there for farmers park, things that would be interesting to people like that, maybe one of the public while we go yeah. get some food, get something to drink, right. check out the taco truck. Yeah, yeah, that location's not in this. this so right. I thought it was what? Where is like it? She showed us the first well, slide on the map. Yeah, we showed it for it's not among the There's, there were six the charging there. stations. Sandy oh, Lane, okay. oh, you were talking she was talking about the areas that are right, right off of ninety one. Yeah. 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 Ye
Right. Right. So, no, the, 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 these, were the, these are the ones that it right. looks like they were evaluating. And, and I think it would be great to have electric charging stations at all the, at the municipal places yeah. as well. Just I don't think we should expect those to be destinations for any of us, other than people who are doing business at the town office, say, for the Hurley Fields or um, all of these other places. And as, as a hypothetical choice. Um, you, you've gone to a number of events for Watermelon Wednesdays, the town hall. Um, the muster and Oh, absolutely. And what about the fact that the uh, completely ends across the street from the town hall? I yeah, but those, those are not going to be destinations for no, but, a traveler coming here. We just wanted to point right. that out. But that these are places where the public would use uh, stations, absolutely. If they were, it's like the old field of dreams. If you build it, they would come. If you yeah. install them, they will get used. Yeah. Yeah. So, is there okay to go to the next question? Or do you need? I don't know. I have this. Go ahead. Um, so, these are public and municipal use. And um, I assume for public, um, like I might typically use a charge point station. Does that mean that these would be basically like a charge point station? But when you're charging for the municipal vehicle, we have our municipal one, the town pays for that. Uh, and then the customers would be registered and then, um, right. so, it's a, so it's not a like free charging like there like was many, many years ago. Right. All over the place. This is um, the public who are using it are paying. Public would pay for it. Um, the van charges to the state have been drastically altered and reduced okay. with the advent of, of more and more EV infrastructure going in. Okay. And in the report, we also talked about uh, there was some discussion about uh, municipal staff being able to take vehicles home. Okay. But one option would be to install for them a, a level two charging system at their house. So if they had an electric vehicle, they can take it all in terms of the house policy. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I don't know. I, let me ask you. I'm an electric vehicle owner. I don't own any gas stations. And I never need to take it home to charge it for any significant amount of time. Like if I had a charging board, I could just do all my charging. And if, if, so some of the vehicles we have, the number of miles they drive are not that big. You might have to just plug it in while you're in the office. And those number of hours of the week are going to be longer. I mean, I I, I think it's it, it's kind of a when we're on, like we get all upset and worried about that. I don't think it's going to be a problem. Well, this was this was based on I know it was based on somebody right. telling you it's going to be a problem about a policy right. for, for completely employees who has such a fear. Right, right. But I'm asking you: Is uh, you have an EV? I assume you not yet. Not yet. It's coming. You work on. You know, when you plug in, it's like we get 25 miles an hour on a level two, roughly. Um, so if, if, I mean, 25 miles a day is a lot to drive for the highway department, say. You know, I think they're going to need to be plugged in overnight anyway. Maybe it's going to be plugged in at the office. I don't think, I think it's sort of a, just maybe that's really for among us. Sure. So that's kind of a um, a another, problem that we don't need to solve because I don't think it's really going to be a problem. Okay. There's another issue with putting in a charger at a department head's house. If the department head retires, leaves, whatever. Yeah. So they, they, they've, got a, should, they've got a charger. Right. So, anyhow, that's, I just, sorry. You know, we all get one rant per meeting. Mm -hmm. There's my rant. Okay. Oh, you're not entitled to another. Uh, <laughs> that, that's a free rant. Okay. So, <laughs> I, I think that's a very fair point, Jessica. I mean, we have a, a Volkswagen EV and um, my wife is a primary driver of that. And I usually take the train into work in Boston. Um, and she, she, she can drive the whole week with an 80% charge. She only really, she goes about over to, to Watertown and maybe around um, 15 or 17 miles round trip, you know, so right. I think you're so, probably right. You know, that. Do it. <laughs> yeah, 
I think that being said, if if people just had that kind of feeling of range of anxiety, I mean, you know this because you're an EV owner, but we installed um, a home level two charger. We bought the charger for $350 from Volkswagen and the electrical upgrades. Every house is different, but it cost us, um, I would say, uh, $1,250. So the total EV charging, the total charging costs were $1,250 plus $350. So, um, it's $1,600. And, um, you know, anyway, so I'm in the level, the level two home charge charges, as you know, are portable. It's like, a, <clears throat> it's like a dry for others, you know, on the call, it's like a dryer plug, you know, that they're installing. So I think if you need to do it, you could do it for relatively short money. Um, but I, I think you're probably right on your observation that people could charge at work, I think um, when you start getting into thinking about the police vehicle having a full charge, they may have some reservations if they're taking it home and they want to come in at 100 percent or, you know. But the, the, the police vehicles are less often taken home. Yeah, um, it, it, highway department. Just, it, yeah. so, or even a fire department. It just depends on the police. Uh, I wanted to check that the list of the six vehicles we have now are there suitable replacement vehicles now on the market and available in electric for those that know, for instance, the police cruisers, the frontline vehicles are not, they do not yet exist in electric or suitable for their markets. Right. And that's what we've got, but police chief, you know, did some research that the you know, frontline cruises just are not yet available as you know, with fully equipped. Any idea? There are, there are, um, there are police, um, forces that have adopted all EV, and I believe Cambridge, Mass is one of them, but there are a number of them. Um, there's an all, all electric police, e um, SUV cruiser from Ford, I believe. So you can do it. But I understand. I also understand the reservations. That, or the, I mean, that, that statement, the answer to that question, are there frontline all, all electric vehicles? It, that answer is going to change with time. Right. And, and if, really, well, that, that was going to be my question. Where, yeah. where, where are we in a timeline of what we of seeing? I mean, get delivered. I would say that leasing makes a lot of sense right now. If you ask, you know, just when as a team, when Rebecca and and um, David and I and Sam, you know, all put our heads together, you know, and writing the report and thinking about the presentation tonight. We we think that the lease makes a lot of sense because it'll, if you did a three year lease, then as the technology improves, you can upgrade and there is an incentive for leasing. Um, so that may be a good way to hedge on um, technology development. So I think any other questions? Yeah. Um, I guess what's the next step? Um, I don't think I was, I, I didn't have enough time to read through the appendices. This is just the PowerPoint. Right. And do we have that report, Sylvie, somewhere? And probably in my inbox. Yeah, Sylvie, if, if you can just send out an email with a link to the full report again. I think I downloaded it, so I think it is on my computer. But yeah, I think it's online also, but sending out the link again I, would probably be useful. Yeah, I, I, I think I got about halfway through it. I didn't get the whole way through it. So I did not get to the to the appendices. I would the, um, that, yeah, go ahead. Well, I would say maybe one closing point from us that's important, and David is in the room and he could speak to this. So we were asked to look at certain locations by um, the previous town manager and previous environmental um, sustainability manager for Whaley. And I think there were good locations to look at. We have, um, as an update for you, I can tell you that the team of um, Weston Sampson and Rivermore Energy and an equipment provider partner of ours have been selected by MassDOT as one of three companies that are doing the electric vehicle charging for MassDOT on highway corridors, that the highway corridors that Rebecca mentioned earlier, Route 91, Route 2, et cetera. So David can speak a little bit about 
he's David has who's in the room has given some thought to, you know, what you might want to put on your radar in terms of of um, suitable locations in Waitley for public access charging. Do you want to share a couple thoughts, David? Sure. Um, so, George, to your point, I mean, the, the six locations we came up with, uh, that was the first cut. Oh, okay. So there may be um, economic development plan that you're doing uh, where you want to try to encourage activity in other areas. Yeah, it's just something to show you places where the infrastructure exists, the utilities, there's access to building facilities already. Uh, as you start to sort of put your foot in the water with this, these are, are six potential locations, but they just certainly change when you really begin to define growth, development, and how services and how they may change. But the, the thing I would, I would just leave you with is it's sort of a, it's, it's a two path road. So as you start thinking about either leasing, as John said, for your initial hybrid vehicle options, start doing a version of the fleet, and more and more options available as the technology advances. You're going to see trucks, more trucks. You're going to see cruisers that are going to be in a short period of time. As you start to look at vehicle replacements, also think about the infrastructure build out. And as John mentioned, this is something that you can help you with doing the gear field in other locations to help think about what are the grants that are available to get that infrastructure developed. So when there's more and more of a switch or an expansion, then wait is going to be ready. Yeah. My thinking is that if we view conversion to an EV fleet as inevitable, I think we pretty much do, then I think that we have to look at the infrastructure first. Because you can't have electric vehicles with no reasonable place to charge them. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, so right. For it's town vehicles. It's a two, it's a two path walk. Right. But it's both sides at the same time. Yeah, but I, I think we really have to almost look at the infrastructure for the charging for yeah. um, element. I, well, you don't want a charging station sitting there on use either. Well, no, no, but, but I, I, no, I'm not saying that we build it and then we only then we start looking at the actual vehicle. But I think we have to yeah, have yeah, a plan early. Right. early. Right. right. They, they, they do have to be in tandem, but I think the first step has to be looking at the, the charging option because you know, if you start looking at vehicles, can't have a vehicle with no reasonable place to charge it. Right. And with just level one charging. Which would take forever. Right. So as, as as John and Rebecca said, you know, this was the first cut, and the whole team is certainly available to work with Sylvia and you, the board, and other officials. We did a lot of interviews with other municipal officials, and we did an assessment, yes. questions that come up, clarification on what's in the report that generates more information for you, so, uh, grants and incentives. So you know, like, I think that's what we need to do. We need to talk to our department heads and the chief police, fire chief, highway, get their ideas for where, what they would need, and then come back and start getting some hard cost estimates to build <laughs> what, what we want from charging. Right. Um, okay. Well, you know, but, I, you know, I, I look at the list of charging locations. And I think, okay, maybe we can combine the police and highway department in the same location to put a bigger yeah. you know, charging facility there. We only need to do the interest, you know, do one, but just have more ports at that location. Same with the library and town hall, which are only two buildings apart. Correct. And you know, which, which one would be a more efficacious mm -hmm. place? Right. Um, to have it, and we need to make those decision, you know, decisions on placing these, and then start getting some hard, harder numbers on for what they're going to cost or what we look at in rebates. I think that's absolute. I think that's the right way to look at it, and I, I agree with you that um, that you do want to do some infrastructure. So maybe you pick one location that's public access oriented, you know, um, 
where the open to the general public, but certainly fleet vehicles could use it as well. And then one where it's you're going to really need it with some of your some of your um, municipal vehicles. I think I think thinking about the infrastructure from the outset, as you said earlier, is the right way to set the foundation. Okay, so it's in our court now to. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess that, that was my question. What's the next step in this? It's working with your board, other department heads, Sylvie, uh, figuring out where you may want to go. And then we can come in and certainly assist with the technology, grants, incentives, sort of. Another, yeah. 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 And yeah. An, another another very actionable um, point would be if the town ha does have some land that you're earmarking and it is within Waitley is a little bit, you know, as we saw on the map, you're sort of in between a couple of the exits, you know, so some of the locations mm -hmm. are farther than a mile. But if you have some land that you're thinking about doing a project on for economic development or housing or municipal facilities or commercial um you could carve out a portion, you know, a small portion of that we're talking about, you know, four to 10 parking spots. And, and um, you know, we could take a look at it for the um, for the current highway grant program, the MassDOT and EVI program. You would need to have some amenities, you know, need to be safe. You would need to, um, you know, have a, some bathrooms fairly close by and need, you know, need to be has some aesthetic value for people who are charging as I think as Jessica said earlier, you know, um in the meeting. But if you want to give that a little bit of thought, it, we'd want to we'd we'd want to think about for mass touch requirements a location that had both an entrance and exit to the highway within a mile, ideally, and then had those those types of amenities, which may not be easy and you know, because it's fairly rural, but that that's an actionable item that we could help you with because we could did have a site like that we could submit it to um to mass dot in the program i'm i'm thinking that somebody to work with the state on doing some of the park and ride they have they do have they're free okay no problem okay so we could not have an electric they wish i you know they're willing to watch from that yeah, parking lot over yeah. yeah. The planning board is probably are probably the folks to talk to, but they're they're working with uh Sylvie and the X35. We're coming up with a better name, a sexier name for the X thirty five. But the uh the planning committee to to talk about zoning and what might go in that area that is an area for economic development. It's a quite a problem to find out. Well, the exit formally known as exit 30. Yes, exit formally known as exit 30. Whatever it was. Okay, uh, we've got nothing else. I think the ball okay. court to come up with a uh, plan of action. And so, yeah. yeah, and we're happy to uh, talk through once you think about some of the other locations. Maybe if you are thinking about the town hall, we're happy to kind of look farther at at that and put together some cost estimating for that as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank time. you very much. Thanks, Thanks for coming in, John. Thanks. Thanks for being a local rep. Right. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you for having us. And David can give you a background on this, but uh, we forgot to mention that, it, but it's in the report that uh, Weston Sampson is a Eversource make ready contractor. So that makes planning out the infrastructure significantly more accurate and um, it, more streamlined. It goes a lot faster. So um, when you're ready, I could really help you on, you know, that's a key part of the solving the problem. So I do want to just mention that. Thank you. Thank you okay. all for joining the meeting tonight. I appreciate you making the time. All right. Thank you. Thank Peace. you. Bye, guys. On to new business to review, discuss, vote, and sign the June 18th annual town meeting in Florida. A town administrator, read the sign. Um, maybe do it or <laughs> you can start. I can start it. Okay. 
So, um, I don't, did you have a chance to look at it at all? Or not prior to this? Um, the first four articles are standard that we always have in the um, meetings. Actually, the first five. Um, six is just the revolving funds, uh, setting the limits. We, we just have to do the li limits now because we passed a bylaw that accepts all the revolving funds previously. Article seven is but before we get off the oh, topic, have we ever had any problem with the ceilings you know, coming in? Um, we ceilings? have adjusted the ceilings on a few of them in the last few years, like the rec committee and uh, I think the uh, recycling solid waste we raised a little while ago. But um oh, we no, have one has, to, no one has come to us and said it needs to be higher. Okay. Um article seven is the elected official salaries. With a, it's a three percent cola added to those. I have a question. Uh -huh. Having been on the select board for two years, I, I think it's time that I know what the Oliver Smith will is. The oh. Oliver Smith will it just was goes will, it's an activist. It, it's um he there was Oliver Smith created a will that in his will he said that he was going to supply a certain sum of money. For various towns, and he listed various towns. Northampton was the prime area. I can't remember how many times. So long. Wow. There's, There's like a lot of towns oh, yeah. okay. that are part of the Oliver Smith will, and we have to have someone from the town to help promote, to manage whatever the Oliver Smith will. Um, basically, it has um, several different uh, categories that people can apply for. Um, and it, they're a little antiquated. <laughs> um, you brides can get, I think it's $100. Um, widows with children can get money. Um, tradespeople, nurses, um, a bunch of different trades, but they aren't specifically listed. I can't remember. Can also apply for some funding through the Alder Smith will. Um, what are the categories? I think those are the three main ones. Um, and Keith Bardwell is presently our elected representative for the Elvis Smith Bill. And is that twelve ninety per hour per meeting per, per year. year? Per year. <laughs> yeah. Wow. So I think that a lot of people aren't um, aren't aware of that option. I have to admit, when I became a bride, I applied for my hundred dollars or whatever it was at the time. Twenty one years ago if I had known about it, I would not <laughs> Oh yeah, that was just like ten years ago. Like, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> so um okay, sorry, moving that's on the right. thank you. I appreciate the clarification. Here we go. Always... <laughs> Article eight is the enterprise fund, the water department's budget. Uh, Article nine is the main budget for the town. The operating budget. Um, we have some transfers uh, in the past. On Article 10, we're using $225,000 to offset the tax rate. Um, 11. 11 through 10 is basically capital. Mm -hmm. um, yes, the question about the team. Yeah. Why is 18? Okay. Why is that not a hybrid vehicle? We got hybrid vehicles. It is. It, is, it, it is. is. It doesn't say it in the article, but it, it is does in the budget. It is. It is a hybrid. Yep. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah. in the. Because I think we'll get that question from. It's in the budget booklet. The budget yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because um, I think. I think last time we put it was for that. Like, yeah. We put it in the. Right. Yeah, you know, I because. think I did put it in under the pickup truck, but I forgot to put the word hybrid in. Could we put the word hybrid in? Yeah, we can do that. Just for clarity. Yep. Just for clarity, I think that would be good. Yep. We can do that. Um, so, um, let's put that down here. Um, the 19 through 23 are community preservation. The first one is the 
the general appropriations to different uh, buckets. Article 20 is for the um, the barn, the yellow barn, to have some upgrade. Article 21 is for batting cages for Hurlicky Field. Article 22 and Article 23 are turning money back that was left over after various projects were done. So one was the uh, skating rinks that were, there was some money left over, $1,000, and the other one, um, the cemetery account for the uh, benches and things that were put in at the cemetery. So that's coming back, going back into the pot. Um, 24 through... Oh, it's been one other question. Oh. Maybe it's the, the, the wording, but I expect other people will read it the same way I did. I at first thought that Article 22 was returning the eleven, oh, a thousand, the thousand yeah. dollars, and then using it to expand the existing oh. ice rink installation or smaller rink. No, and I realize as I read the words, that's not what it says. No. But it, uh, but I mean, I guess expect that. But if you read it that way, <laughs> remember that Joyce made that mistake too and got it corrected uh, okay. by by reading it a second time. Honestly. <laughs> um, I worded it the way uh, the they were worded, worded in previous ones. So, yeah. And then um, 24 through 29 are zoning articles. Yeah. Um, two of them pertain to, well, one is to remove uh, um growth control bylaw. No. The second is to basically when we they're just ending the Waitley Water District, they needed to take out references to the district. And then one is also to the map to change the categories where the zone one and zone two are on the map by removing those from the Waitley Water District. Article 27 is to add a um, community housing section mm -hmm. and article I apologize. Can we go back to Article 24? Yep. I'm not sure that I understand removing the article about road control. I'm still um, those discussions. Are we no longer controlling road? Uh, basically, control? it's been uh, recommended that road control, people have bought it and won in the courts. So it's in yeah, your system. It's in here. You're supposed to have so if you have a growth control yeah. bylaw. Yeah. This is the growth control bylaw. Yeah. If you have it, if you have one, you have to now limit it to we will control growth for two years because of this is just a generalized growth control bylaw. They found that it was not, I'm not gonna say not constitutional, but they were cases where we will audit and this is sounding familiar yeah right. so, so this bylaw is replacing our exhaust. No, this no. is being removed in its entirety oh, oh, okay. so the, the whole, whole text is there the text. To show you oh, the text is there, there. there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so in a way they could have put this whole thing in strike through right that whole it thing have. exists right. now yeah and would be it would put okay. it's yep. going and away. I was just thinking that that new one they want to put in is they could just number it 171 that's 38. If or we eight. talked about it, but it's referenced, they're referenced in other areas of the bylaw, so it gets a little confusing if you forget to do right. another reference somewhere else. So actually council advice just to leave it just with the number and yeah. what so and but delete it or something like <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, that's what uh, will happen. And so you don't have to renumber everything and then re-reference it. Right, right. Yeah. Um, the other thing with the growth control, what was I got? Yeah. Oh, well. Um, they, oh, we have a growth control bylaw of pen building permits, and we actually have never even gotten to that point okay. in a year. Even with the subdivision, because the subdivision had a different category, it would allow you additional. Um, so, so it hasn't really even been put in place. To, <laughs> um, so that's 25 is where we're removing references to the Waitley Water District. 26 is 
uh, changing the town map to remove the zone one, zone two that go with the Waitley Water District. Mm -hmm. 27 is adding a section called community housing. And article 28 is just to change the table of use to include that section of community housing. And 29 is to clarify uh, ag residential district one and two on how the frontage is able to be used and whether you can count the frontage in your area one towards building in area two. So um, they were just clarifying that. And then the last three articles are were petitioned articles by uh, residents. The first is regarding the zip codes. Second is to end the war on Gaza. And the third is the voting rights of 16 and under. Oh, 16, uh, oh, 16, yeah. 16 and under. 16 and under. 15. Thank you. Thank you. No, I, no, I asked you one question. I, I resulted in an extra word. I need to make sure we have the right place, time, and place. Oh, uh, yeah, because you don't want to go like April 19th. <laughs> yeah. And, oops, this has to be Um. Ooh. We're going to have to change the signing page because it says June 19th. Right. Yeah, that's uh, not the right Oh, okay. I'll do the good. Well, we're in the May 20 truck slowly. Oh, okay. yeah. Yes. Let's see. Can you tap the keys? I don't. Let's see. Amy wanted to change our. What was she requesting? I can't remember. <laughs> I think she just wanted to change her evening hours to Monday rather than Tuesday. Is Monday the like the third is Monday? Yeah, yeah, that kind of makes sense. She was um, struggling with kids and the activities, their activities always seem to fall on Tuesdays and Thursdays. So oh, okay. <laughs> she felt that Monday night would be better. So, I have an objection. Yeah, right. And let's see. To discuss operations at Cup Castaways and for this well, one, that no, one. I want to. Let's. Oh, wait a minute. We, we, we have to vote it. Um, the oh, that's right. Um, well, I think that we approved this uh, in our meeting for with the correct <laughs> date on the last page and with the Hybrid inserted into Article 18. Yep. Second. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. A corrected flat page. Yep. And is the to, work we do recite something we need to vote on, or we just say? Yep. I don't know whether you have you voted in the past when a request like this is made? It's more of an informative sort of thing. I think how long is the number of hours stayed the same? Yeah, yeah. In those. Yep. Yeah. And it's uh, We've got no, no problem with it. Uh, okay, to discuss operation of the pathway, which is what forward to consider next steps for two of their rentals on all the state public. The castaways variance expires day after tomorrow. Uh, I would like to extend it until June 10th and have a representative pathways and police chief here to, to talk about it. I want to take I don't feel it would take me long term action one way or the meetings, other without hearing yeah. from the principal. And our next meeting was June 10th. 10th. Right. So, um, okay. extend it. Extend two that weeks. I, I would move we extend for two weeks. Uh, and ask people to do Yeah. We have Second. a representative cast away and police chief here to talk about it. I'll send it that. Okay. Session. All in favor? Aye. Aye. 
See if anything else listed on the old business. The Vietnam updates. Right from the eighth. Oh, I'm going to have a, a good meeting for this upcoming senior center on Thursday. So next time I'll have something to come back. Next sure. week I've got a meeting on the old. We got this great grant to get an accessible van for South County Snow Center. And uh, the towns between the three of us are putting in uh, some it's roughly 20% match. And we're getting so we're getting 80% of this vehicle for free. Okay. And we need it and we that demonstrated the need for it. It's awesome. Yeah, we put in 6215 our effort. That's right. So Sound and administrator <laughs> updates. Oh, do we have anything? Nope, you have a list of pending items to what's going on. Okay. So, I don't have an awful lot. The accessories are going seems to be working well. I am. I'll be. We'll be starting interviews. I've gotten some applications for the assistant director collector and the planning and zoning board secretary. So we'll be starting interviews on those this week, not the way or early next week. I got to make sure someone calls the house. So. Um. Yeah, it seems to be moving along okay. Next meeting is June 10th, town election June 11th, town meeting is June 13th. Any other business? The vote to adjourn. We adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Yeah. Great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. This is the